Okay, so welcome back. Uh, now, recently a question arose that on the uh, surface sounds like a very simple answer to the question, and uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but upon looking into it, it turns out it's a fairly interesting uh, question and a, a fairly complex answer. And uh, what we're going to do in this, um, this is going to be the first in a series of maybe three videos, where we're going to look at the question, kind of understand a little bit more about it, and look into some possible solutions. And the question is, how do I keep my display on my computer, my desktop or laptop or whatever, how do I keep that display from going to sleep or blanking out after a certain amount of time of no activity of the mouse or the keyboard, right? How do I keep it from going to sleep? Well, you know, the obvious answer was you go into your settings. Uh, here's a Linux. You can go into settings. You can change the screensaver, the power settings or whatever, and just tell it, don't go to sleep. After uh, no activity, keep it on indefinitely. Um, well, what if you can't do that or you don't want to do that? You know, maybe you, you can't change those settings or maybe you just don't want to go through and do that. Well, the other answer is obviously you can download a free piece of software, a little application that will fake out your computer and make it think that there's mouse activity and keep it on indefinitely even if you don't change those uh, admin settings. Well, what if you don't want to load any software on your computer? You just want the computer to be the way it is. No new software, no settings changes. And you still want it to um, make like it is having mouse activity um, so that it doesn't go to sleep. Well, the answer is turns out to be fairly complicated and um, it's kind of interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some alternatives, some possible options. We're going to learn a bit, little bit more about optical mice like this, how they work, how they do their thing, and what you would actually need to uh, make this happen. Now, if you think about it, um, all I'm doing with the mouse is I'm moving it around on the, on the um, mouse pad or on the desktop or whatever. So how does it convert from movement of the mouse on your desk to movement of cursor on your screen? Well, when you think about it, um, if you look at the mouse, um, if I take, I've got like a little mini screwdriver, you can take any little device, and if you look at the cursor on the screen, if I move this, you can see that the cursor moves as I move this device. There's a light shining through this screwdriver handle and um, it's flashing and the cursor on the display is moving in response. So really the, the problem is how do I make something move in front of this light system to make it think that the, the mouse is moving? And you might think, well, that's a fairly simple thing. I just got to you know, put some motion under that light system and the mouse will think it's doing something. Well, yeah, it seems like a very simple thing, but in practice it can be kind of complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to start out looking at how this optical mouse actually works and what it actually does internally. And from that we're going to try and figure out how we can uh, make the mouse think that it is moving when it's not. Okay, so let's start out by first looking at a optical mouse and get a, an idea of how the thing works. Now here is um, the mouse I showed you previously and you can see if you look on the bottom this is the really important working part of the mouse. Um, and this is the one that converts movement of the mouse into signals that tell your computer uh, where to put the cursor on the screen, okay? And there's basically two major parts. There's an LED, and this is just a standard LED like you can buy at the store, and that shines a light, and then there's also a sensor built into the mouse. And surprisingly, it's a fairly complex sensor device. And 
what happens is the LED, there's a lens here that focuses the LED light onto the, um, your desk or your mouse pad, and the light reflects into the sensor, and the sensor um, basically takes many, many images. It's basically like a camera, and it takes many images per second, and it detects changes in the image uh, to correspond to motion of the sensor. And really, it's kind of uh, fascinating. It's got a little tiny sensor, and we'll take a look at it. And it does a whole lot of um, image processing in there to determine that the mouse is moving. So if you look inside the mouse, uh, here is the mouse wheel on the left. And over here is the LED. And you can see it's got two terminals, a plus and a minus. And inside this red case is just a basic LED. And you can see here a lens. So the light shines through the lens onto your mouse pad. And then it bounces off and comes into this sensor. And this is the important part uh, that, that determines motion based on taking a bunch of pictures. It grabs images uh, many times a second and looks at differences in subsequent images to determine motion. And you can see it's an 8-pin device. And it basically converts those changes in images into a USB signal that goes out here uh, onto your USB cable. So really kind of fascinating device. So how does this work? Well, here is a simple diagram. I've got the LED inside the mouse. And it shines a light, and here's your mouse pad down here. And the light bounces off the mouse pad and hits the sensor. And the sensor is a very low resolution, um, something 18 by 18 pixels, something like that. And it basically uses those to generate an image. So here is kind of my simplified uh, view of what those images, those individual images, look like. And again, they're very low resolution, and they're images of a very small part of your mouse pad, a very tiny area of the mouse pad. And it might look something like this, and you can see it's a very low resolution image. And one image will look like this, and then the next one as the mouse moves, it might look like that, and then like that, and like that. And it senses the difference in those images to determine how much motion. Now here is a, um, a data sheet from uh, a, a sensor very similar to one that um, is in the mouse I showed you. And it's made by a company called PixArt Imaging. And apparently they are a very big name in uh, optical sensors for optical mice. And I've got a PAW32 something. This is a PAW35. But you can see it's got some um, data on it. And it's got a resolution CPI. And that's kind of like DPI, but it's counts per inch. And it basically says, if I move the mouse one inch, how many pixels or how many counts of pixels does that correspond to in your uh, computer screen? So the default is 1,000 counts per inch. So 1,000 pixels is one inch of movement. So if you've got a 1920 by 1080, um, if you move it vertically one inch, you're getting about the entire 1080 pixels, all right? So you only need to move your mouse one inch to go 1080 pixels. Now, depending on how deeply you want to get into these optical mouse sensors, uh, SparkFun had an optical mouse sensor evaluation kit, which they no longer uh, provide, um, made by Avago. Apparently, Avago sold out to PixArt. But um, they do have on the SparkFun website this very nice 27-page optical mouse sensor data sheet. And it's got all kinds of information about how uh, such an optical sensor might work. And it's really very nice. It's got different circuits. Um, requirements, it's got ratings, uh, timing charts, and even if you go down to the near the end, it shows the, um, the pixel map, 
which shows a 18 by 18 um, sensor. And it also shows some pixel dump pictures, basically sample pictures, um, looking at a white piece of paper, manila folder, um, Burl Formica, U.S. Air Force test chart, whatever. So um, you can, it's an ADNS 2620, again, no longer supported, I believe, no longer made, but it's got a very nice data sheet if you want to get into this. Okay, so now that we know the basics of how these optical mice work, um, we know that in order to give it information that makes it think that it's moving, we need some sort of image that it can, moving image that it can take a photo of and detect uh, motion. So how are we going to do that? I mean, the obvious thing is you could somehow move um, a piece of fabric or a mouse pad or something under the mouse every minute or two minutes or whatever is needed. But then you've got to have some sort of motor or some sort of motion to move it. Now, one of the solutions you'll see people mention often is, well, you've got a, a, a wristwatch. The second hand is in motion. So just lay your mouse on top of it. And you can see here's my uh, cursor on my display. So just put the sensor on top of the wristwatch and it will move. Well, may work for you, but in my experience uh, with the watch I have and with the mouse I have, it never works. So yeah, it might work for some people with some particular mice and with some particular wristwatches or clocks, um, it's certainly not going to work for everyone. So um, what else can you do? Well, one thing I thought of is to maybe use your smartphone and play a repeating GIF or play a video or something. And then you can just take your mouse, put it on top of that, and maybe that will provide the feedback, the changing image will provide the feedback to show that your mouse is um, active. Well, um, I tried that with some success, and this is one of those things where I think it depends a lot. Depends on the image, depends on, uh, you know, the colors and the speed of the image and how the mouse responds to those. Uh, it probably depends on the mouse itself. Um, and then, um, you know, you, you're also going to have to keep your screen active. You know, it's the same issue with your laptop, your computer. You need the screen to be active all the time so the mouse can sense the colors and the light. So um, one of my phones doesn't allow you to keep it on all the time. So I had to download another piece of software that forces your, um, your Android, your, your smartphone to stay on and never shut off the screen. So it gets kind of complex. And in my experience, it's maybe 20% reliable. I mean, if you put the mouse at the exact right position and you've got the right image and the right speed, um, it can work. But then, you know, sometimes it doesn't. So it's, it's very hit or miss, touch and go. So um, not very reliable, it may work, it may not. Now, one thing that we're going to look into further, and I'm gonna have another couple videos showing how to do something that I think is 90 to 100% reliable. And that is a device like this. And um, I put this together, and um, I'm gonna, in the next two or three videos, we're gonna show how to implement something like this fairly inexpensively and what it does is it has it's basically a simple cheap little plastic box and it's got a servo motor in here and I put a little piece of cardboard on the top and what you can do is you can just put your mouse on top of that and the servo will turn every however long you set it and it will simulate the mouse moving. And that works, from what I've seen, it's about 100% reliable. So um, in the next couple of videos, we're gonna show how to put together something like this. We're gonna use a Raspberry Pi, 
And then in another video, we're going to look at an Arduino. And um, again, very reliable way to do this. So anyway, I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.